History tells the story of the world and of our lives. Sometimes that history goes bump in the night. Broadcasting from the center of oddity and the supernatural in Central Florida, it's the History Goes Bump podcast. Hello, you spectacular people. Welcome to this 430th episode of the History Ghost Bump podcast, Ghost Tours for the Theater of the Mind. I am your host, Diane. And this is Kelly. Kelly, on this episode, we're presenting another one of our paranormal investigations. We had such a great time. We did, and it's been a while since we've been out to do one of these. It's a local place about two hours south of us in Arcadia, Florida. It's an old opera house. We're looking forward to bringing that to you. But before we do that, we have one, one person to welcome into the Spooktacular crew, and that's Deborah. Thank you so much for joining our Facebook group. And now this moment, Noddity. The moment in Oddity was suggested by Chelsea Flowers. Mithridates VI was the son of the ruler of the Kingdom of Pontus, which today is parts of the countries of Turkey, Russia, Romania, and Greece. His father's reign would end in 120 BC when he was assassinated by poison that was served in some food at a feast. He and his brother weren't of age to take the throne, so their mother served as regent. Mithridates feared that his mother would kill him, so he went into hiding and while doing that, he came up with this crazy idea. He was going to try to make himself immune to poison. He was paranoid that he would be assassinated in the same way his father was killed. He regularly consumed small amounts of poison. When he was old enough to rule, he returned and had his mother arrested and eventually executed. He began attempting to build an empire and turned on the Roman Republic. He orchestrated a mass killing of 150,000 Romans and Italians. The Romans warred with him and he lost. He fled across the Black Sea. Mithridates tried to raise a new army and was harsh on the local nobles who decided to kill him. Mithridates figured this out and tried to take his own life by poison. Unfortunately, his plan to make himself immune to poison had worked, and he didn't die. He then asked his bodyguard and friend to kill him with a sword. There is now a term for this practice of gradual self-poisoning to create immunity called Mithridatism, and that certainly is odd. You're not afraid of a little ghost, are you? And now, this month in history. In the month of April, on the 9th in 1939, Marian Anderson sang on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. Marian Anderson had one of the most amazing singing voices in the world. It was described as a voice that is only heard, quote, once in a hundred years. She sang throughout the world, but America was home. And it was here that she was not welcome in many places. Places like Constitution Hall. This was because of her skin color. The irony is not lost on us that a place named for a document guaranteeing the rights of every human was discriminating against a woman of color. The venue was owned and operated by the Daughters of the American Revolution, and many women quit the organization in protest, including First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. The Secretary of the Interior at the time, Harold L. Ikes, invited Anderson to sing instead on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And she did that on Easter Sunday in 1939 before a crowd of 75,000 people and a live radio audience of millions. And it seems that this was a more fitting place as it honored the man behind the Emancipation Proclamation. The Heard Opera House is located in Arcadia, Florida. This building has served a variety of purposes through the years, from bank to theater to retail businesses. Artifacts, antiques, and collectibles have come through. 
The history is murky for this spot, but something has caused there to be a lot of spiritual residue here. Is it all the years of ghost hunts that have been hosted here, drawing spirits from other places? We joined a paranormal investigation at this historic site, and we're going to share the results of that on this episode. Arcadia, Florida is in Peace River country and sits about two hours south of where we're located in central Florida and sits near the west coast between Tampa and Fort Myers. The area where Arcadia would be started was industrialized early and was first settled in 1883. The town had several names early on, Waldron's Landing, Rollerson Landing, and Tater Hill Bluff. I'm assuming those first two are named for people. I don't know where Tater Hill Bluff came from. They like taters. I guess, but I don't know of anybody growing any potatoes there, so I'm not sure. Tater Tot Hill Bluff. Ooh. I would actually, that sounds like a good little appetizer. <laughs> yeah. The Reverend James Madison Henry named the town after the daughter of early pioneers Thomas and Fanny Albrighton. Their daughter, Arcadia, had baked him a cake for his birthday, and this was his way of saying thank you. Hey, I'll bake you a cake if you'll name a town after me, too. No kidding. But what a cool name for your child, Arcadia. I wonder where they got that from. In 1886, the Florida Southern Railway was built through Arcadia that would connect Bartow to Punta Gorda. This was followed by the Charlotte Harbor and Northern Railway that came through in 1907, and then there was the short-lived East and West Coast Railway to Bradenton. So Arcadia was becoming a railway hub. We passed the old railroad depot at 24 West Oak, just before we got to the Opera House. The town was incorporated in 1887 and is the county seat of DeSoto County. This decision was made after the residents set forth a proposition to build a courthouse at their own expense. That's a good way to bribe them to say, can we have this be the county seat? Agreed. We'll build you a courthouse. And it's a really cool looking courthouse, too. It's very nice. Clearly, they really wanted this honor. That building was finished in 1889. A school was built in 1887 and a church in 1888. Arcadia was an industrial town built on the backs of slave labor that worked in the factories, however. The city grew slowly and steadily until tragedy hit on November 30th, 1905. A fire burned down four entire business blocks in the heart of the downtown area. The fire had started at a livery stable, and an inadequate water supply gave little help in putting out the fire. No one died in the fire, but insurance didn't cover much, and the city was completely devastated. Arcadia would rebuild over time, with Oak Street becoming one of its main streets. Waterworks were established, and all new buildings were required to be built from brick, stone, or concrete. All sorts of commerce would build up in the downtown. All sorts of commerce would build up in the downtown, featuring stores selling furniture, jewelry, fruit, dried goods, hardware, general merchandise, and meat. There were lawyers, gunsmiths, dentists, contractors, barbers, and doctors. There were also restaurants, land and insurance agents, and wagon makers. Later, there would even be a rattlesnake meat cannery. Can you believe that they actually had enough rattlesnake meat that they had a cannery for it? No, I was kind of shocked. Now, I will say I have had rattlesnake before. There's a place called The Fort in Colorado that serves all kinds of weird types of stuff. I also had buffalo tongue there, which Ew. tasted good until they told me what it was. <laughs> and then I was like, ick. But we also had rattlesnake there and it was it was good. I can't describe exactly what it is. To me, it was more like eating fish. It takes on whatever flavor you add to it. Gotcha. Not like chicken. <laughs> they always say tastes like chicken. One of the buildings in historic downtown had been the Jake Way Rexel Drugstore. The name Jake Way is still emblazoned on the tiles in the doorway at 25 West Oak Street. And this was right across from where we parked, Kelly. Yes, it was. Jacob Way had come to Florida in 1889 and opened his first pharmacy in Punta Gorda. In 1893, he moved to Arcadia and opened the pharmacy there. Zeba King was a cattle baron who financed the first national bank at 34 West Oak. This structure survived the fire and had a really cool tower that no longer's on the building. I was really bummed when I looked back at the old historical photos. I was like, now, if I'd seen that building, I would have stopped to take a picture of it for sure. Absolutely. The coolest building on the street was right across from the Opera House. We shared a picture on Instagram. I shared several pictures that we took the evening that we were doing this. And Kelly, you know, I got out of the car and just did a little 360 and was like, wow. Yeah, such a cool Main Street. Yeah. And Love then all the buildings. we looked at this building and the first thing that grabs your attention is it's pink, 
<laughs> which it's not hot pink. It's just a regular pink. But it was very flamboyant looking and it's in an art deco architectural style. So you put those two things together and you had our attention. This is known as the Rosen Arcade and was built in 1926 by Simon Rosen. There was a post office here and Rosen's Boston store. Later, this became the Coke's Drug Store and Soda Fountain, which I wish it still was today. I would have hopped in there and gotten me a, a bubbly soda kind of, I don't know. Probably shouldn't have gotten ice cream in it. That would have caused some really haunting activity <laughs> later on. <laughs> I was actually just thinking. <laughs> Since I'm a little lactose intolerant, but I love to get malts and things like that. Today, these are studio apartments on the upper level and retail stores and a bar and restaurant below, which is called Rattler's Old West Saloon. And I hadn't realized while we were doing our investigation until I listened back to our audio, you can hear the music from over at the saloon while we're recording things. You can hear kind oh, of country wow. music in the background. Huh, I so didn't even notice that. I was like, you know what? I bet that was from the bar over there because we didn't know it was in there when we got there. I just thought it was like antique shops maybe on the bottom. But when I look back over the history of this street, I was like, oh, there was a bar over there. And then when I listen back to our audio, I'm like, and you can hear it. <laughs> The studio apartments that are up above are really nice looking. I know. The building itself looks, you know, a little aged. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe needs a little bit of TLC. But yeah, I saw those pictures of the interior apartments and I was like, holy smokes. Yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah. So nice place. Another of the historic buildings here was the first to be built after the fire in 1906. And that is the topic that we are going to be dealing with, the Heard Opera House. It's also sometimes called the Arcadia Opera House. I've heard both. I just thought I would give it its first name that it ever was known by. This sits at 106 West Oak Street. Today, the Arcadia Historic District covers 3,400 acres with 293 historic buildings. That's amazing they've saved that many buildings. Yeah, it's incredible. If you love antiques, this is a great place to visit. I told Kelly we have got to go back there during the day because I love to wander through antique shops and they were all closed when we got there. So, Yep, definitely looking forward to it. There are some who claim that an orphanage had sat on the spot where the opera house now sits and that it burned down in the Great Fire. We haven't found any proof for this and the only orphanage nearby that we did find was the Florida Baptist Orphanage that was located one mile north of Arcadia. This opened February 1st, 1904. So what was here? It seems to be a mystery. Whatever it was, burned down in the Great Fire. We do know that the property was initially owned by three couples, John Jay and Mary Philbrick, Raymond and Florence Alvarez, and Peter and Malvina Williams. They didn't live in the city, rather Key West. On June 22, 1891, the attorney representing the couples, J.W. Whitten, sold the property to Andrew Green for $50. He worked as Arcadia's postmaster. Three years later, he sold the property to Samuel Joseph Simmons for $1,000. Since this was a huge increase from $50, people believe a structure was on the site. But as to what that was, we don't know. Simmons was a merchant and served two terms on the Arcadia City Council. John J. Hurd, a citrus baron, would buy the property on October 12, 1905 for a $2,000 promissory note. So now it's doubled in price again. So whatever was here, which it would be nice to know because it helps when you're investigating, but it had to have had something here. Heard wouldn't have whatever was on the site for long because the following month, the fire ripped through. Heard lost that, whatever that was, his dwelling house, which they put in parentheses, and citrus packing house to the fire. Now, I know when we were there, there was a guy that was investigating, I think, that supposedly knows a lot of the history there. And he had said that Hurd's house had been here before. And I don't know if they're getting that because it said that he lost his dwelling house and then the citrus packing house. So they just assume that's what was here. But I have not gone to any historic districts where you're on the main business street and had somebody's house sitting there like a mansion. Right. So I'm thinking he wouldn't have had his mansion on this main drag where all the businesses were set up. John was married to Lowe and they had four children. They pressed on and Heard built the Opera House in 1906 and opened the South Florida Loan and Trust Company on the first floor. Heard would also found the Arcadia Electric Light Ice and Telephone Company. Those are interesting things to throw all together. Yeah, quite a combination. I could see the electric <laughs> and the light and the telephone, but ice... And he also owned the Carlton Block, the Central Hotel, and the Arcadian Mercantile Company. So he owned a lot of stuff. Heard left for Jacksonville in 1911 and founded the Heard National Bank there. 
It would go bankrupt in 1918, and he was arrested along with four other businessmen. They managed to get the depositors paid in full, and the charges were dropped. I don't know what they did that caused it to go bankrupt. I don't know if they were doing some shady business, but supposedly they got it all taken care of eventually. As for the Opera House property, the Dozier's department store moved in, which was owned by A.J. Dozier. The name is in the tile of the foyer floor. We didn't get to see that because we just went directly up these stairs that took us to the second floor. Right. So I have no idea what was on that first floor. Then there was an Eaton's department store that operated on the first floor. The upstairs had offices and the stage, and this continued to be used for performances and as a civic auditorium. Films would be shown here later. So this building was a social center for Arcadia. James Crosby opened up the Bazaar Bazaar in 2009, which featured 9,000 square feet with dozens of rooms of antiques, vintage art, and thousands of vinyl albums. He ran the store for 12 years, but uh, our COVID pandemic recently took it out. It closed down. If you do look on YouTube, there are a couple of videos up there that will show you what the inside of the Bazaar Bazaar looked like back in its heyday. And it had some interesting stuff in there. We, we watched a couple of videos on that. Now the building is under renovations and is back to putting on plays and the various rooms host classes and other events. The original stage is still here, along with the ticket booth and gallery. Crosby hosted ghost hunts, too, and there are some ghost stories. One legend claims that a little girl fell out of a window and died a few years after the opera house was built, but we have nothing to substantiate that. Crosby told a paper, there's a good story of a woman who was sitting at the stoplight on the corner of Oak and Polk, who looked up and saw a little girl staring at her. And she sat through three red lights until somebody finally honked, and when she looked back, the little girl had disappeared from the window. Another death that might have happened here involved J.J. Hurd and a woman he was supposedly having an affair with. This woman gave him an ultimatum that it was either her or the wife, and Hurd chose his wife. The woman hanged herself from the corner rafters. And again, we have nothing to substantiate that. There's no newspaper articles or anything. I would think it would make the newspaper. One would imagine, but... We arrived in Arcadia around 7 p.m. We had traveled through some areas of Florida we hadn't been through before. This was definitely cattle country with lots of open space and small towns. We found Oak Street and parked a half block down from the Opera House. We went inside to check in and wandered around some of the rooms before the hunt began. There was a room that is clearly being used by a chess club, another where stained glass is made, several with antiques inside them, and then the main stage. We found some seats in front of the stage and listened to the customary introductions and such. We didn't really receive any history on the building and didn't have the customary tour of the property, so once they finished up, we were on our own. Which is fine and even preferable sometimes, so the waters don't get muddied with wrong information. One thing that did make things difficult were the number of people allowed on the hunt. This was a big building, but not big enough to handle a crowd of over 40 people. We were thinking this was going to be around 25 people maximum. We did manage to find a couple of quieter corners, though, and we think we got some evidence. Our first stop was a room that had padding on the floor that is used for karate classes. And the reason why we went in here is there was another woman that was there that was, I think, unlocking doors or something. And she said, this room has a lot of activity in it. And she goes, they think there's a little girl in here. And then while we were sitting in there a little bit later, there's a guy who... I don't know how sensitive or whatever some people are, but he claimed that he could feel that there was a little girl in that room and that she likes to hang out by the window. But of course, if you already know the information that a little girl went out a window, maybe that's why you're feeling that. True. So we set up the K2, the flashlight, with the flashlight experiment, and Kelly got out her trusty little dousing rods. The dousing rods confirmed we were talking to a girl, but we weren't sure on age. We think we caught an EVP despite the noise contamination with all the people there. There was only Kelly and I in this room. And the room was rather large. It was a very big room. And we were the only ones in there. And of course, it was kind of nice to have the padding on the floor because that's going to help to not have the sound be quite so loud that was coming from out in the other rooms and stuff. We had two recorders going because I always have one recorder that I have going the whole time just so that it can catch any information that we get see if we get any other EVPs. And it kind of helps sometimes if we do catch something, then did we catch it on the other recorder too? And then I have a smaller handheld that will do like a brief little EVP session where we're specifically asking for questions 
waiting for an answer, asking another question, blah, blah, blah. So here's the recording from the session recorder. All right, it's gotten quiet. So I wonder if you could try to say your name again. I know it's probably irritating. Can Ooh, you say your name again? I know your name. I'll play it again. All right, it's gotten quiet. So I wonder if you could try to say your name again. I know it's probably irritating. Ooh, Can you say your name again? I know your name. And then here it is on our recorder that's, I think it's our better recorder. All right, it's gotten quiet. So I wonder if you could try to say your name again. I know it's probably irritating. Can you say your name again? I your name. I'll go ahead and play it again. All right, it's gotten quiet. So I wonder... If you could try to say your name again, I know it's probably irritating. Can you say your name again? Know your name. What you're hearing, which is probably pretty hard because we had to listen to this over and over and over again, there are three voices. There's me, Kelly, and someone else that sounds like uh, not a little girl, but an older woman more our age or at least not a child. Right. I was, to me, it sounds like maybe she's in her early 20s, something like that. Yeah. So I'm saying, can you say your name again? And at the same time, Kelly's going to cut in and kind of interrupt me saying, we want to know your name. So I'm saying, can you say your name again? Kelly's saying, we want to know your name. And then we think there's this third voice and it sounds like it's saying, do you really want me to? Right. And it comes right smack in the middle of what you're saying and what I start saying. Exactly. So at first I thought, as I listened to it the first couple times, you can get audio artifacts sometimes in these EVP when you have multiple voices. But when I'm listening, I can distinctly make out each line that we're saying. And she starts saying it with me. Then you start talking and then you still hear her talking through you. So it really is some line that's coming through the whole thing. Right. And it was really cool to catch it on both recorders. Yes. And we definitely got it on both recorders. I'll go ahead and play it again. Can you say your name again? Can you know your name? Can you say your name again? Can you know your name? Can you say your name again? Can your name? This might be something that when you get home, you put on your headphones and just play that part over and over again. You have to listen really close, but we thought it was pretty cool because it's definitely very close to the recorder. So she's literally right there with us. I didn't have to amp it in order to hear it at all. And I also want to point out, you can hear the background noise, but we were at the opposite end from where the door was. We were sitting as far away from that door as possible. Mm -hmm. And you can tell that the voice is right up right there. (laughs) Yeah. So it's definitely not like a background voice in the distance. It's like right there with us. This spirit also indicated that another spirit was in the room and she pointed the rods to the other side of the room to show us where it was. She also lit up the K2 a couple of times. We decided to wander around for a bit after this. We stopped in one room where it looked like a couple of women were using a doll as a trigger item and they had a K2 next to it that was going crazy. It seemed exciting until we saw that one of the women had her cell phone right next to the K2, and it clearly wasn't on airplane mode because it dinged the arrival of text messages, and she started reading them. (laughs) Yeah, we were just kind of poking our head in and out of rooms to see what people were doing, and I was like, wow, that K2 is like hitting red and like staying there. That's amazing. And it was right next to what looked like a trigger item. (laughs) And then Kelly goes, well, her phone is sitting right there. I wonder if she has it on airplane mode. And I didn't want to interrupt him by asking. But then we heard ding. And then she goes, oh, they're saying da 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 da. And I was like, okay. (laughs) Obviously, we have some newbies here that don't understand that your phone's going to set that K2 off. Right. So we searched for another quiet spot because we wanted to conduct an Estes method with the spirit box. And we found a staircase leading to a roll up delivery door with a ladder type chute on the side to transport stuff. It was pretty quiet, so we set up all our equipment. And it kind of felt to me like it was the body shoot at Waverly. 
It was kind of off on its <laughs> own. It was a very long staircase. And because it had that ladder, like, I don't know, it was like some kind of mechanism that they could pull stuff up, I guess. It looked like a conveyor belt of sorts. Yeah, it just made me think of a body shoot. <laughs> so I was like, well, this might be the perfect place anyway. And I have to tell you, Kelly, we've really gotten good, I think, at doing these Estes methods. I feel like, you know, you're sensitive when we go into rooms and stuff. And I always tell people I'm as sensitive as a rock. But I feel like I really am getting the knack of this Estes method. Yes. When you do the Estes with the spirit box, that's definitely your jam. What's interesting about it is, of course, when you're the person who's actually feeding out what the spirit box is telling you, you don't know if any of it's making any sense until later. I'll get a lot of stuff that spit at me and either I'm not catching it or you almost have to kind of decipher what you're supposed to say and not say. And I think that's where maybe some of my sensitivity is coming in is in knowing like that's something that should be said. Yeah. I and I mean, it seems like every time when you finally take the noise canceling earmuffs off, you're always shocked that I'm saying, no, we had like a full on conversation. <laughs> Yeah, because what I'll be saying doesn't even seem to make any sense other than like if it's people's names or something, I'm like, maybe they're saying their name. Right. This is the first of three Estes Method Spirit Box sessions that we conducted during the evening. We're going to go ahead and play that for you right now. And we'll break in occasionally to talk about some of the stuff that comes up. Okay, we're going to start over. We want to be Hi. Hi. (laughs) You're very polite. (laughs) So can you share if you're a gentleman or a lady? Let me come. Where would you like to go? We're just here to learn about you. So previously, you said maybe that you worked here? Did you also live here? You can share anything that you want through that. She's wearing this stuff so that it doesn't make a lot of noise outside and she can concentrate better. And that way she can hear you better and know what you're saying. Okay. Excellent. Three. Three? Are there three of you here? Or are you three years old? Me. You. Are you a child? Did you live here when it was... Mom? (laughs) I am a mom. I'm a mom of... I said... Oh, you're a mom. You're a mom? No. No. Okay. Sorry if I misunderstood. So, are you three years old? I'm going to move this right out here in case you want to turn that on to communicate as well. That lights up like a rainbow. Peach? Peach? Am I messing with my hair? It's okay if you play with my hair, I don't mind, but. Just as long as you're nice. I actually have that happen a lot. Your? My hair? Yeah, I have. My hair played with a lot <laughs> when we Yes. When we speak with people. Yeah. Patience. Oh, I see a puppy dog. It sounded like it said the F word. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Well, hopefully not. We don't. We don't need to. You know, you don't mean any disrespect. Hopefully, you don't mean any disrespect. We're just here to learn about you. And if you don't want to speak with us, and somebody else wants to come through, that's perfectly fine. So Kelly, as people here, there, you felt as though your hair was being touched. I sure did. And it happens quite often, but it's always very gentle. Yeah, it's nobody ever just yanks on it. No, thank goodness. (laughs) We'll continue the session. Again, we don't mean any disrespect. We just want to have a conversation. No. 
And that was very clear. Okay. Would somebody else like to speak with us? Who were the three? You said the number three. Was it three? Monkey. Monkey. Okay. It's <laughs> the first time I've heard that one. So there we got the word monkey, which you giggled about. And again, I'm like, oh, sometimes there's these words that come through. I have no idea why. Yeah, that was the first time I had ever heard that one. <laughs> well, later in the evening, we go wandering through these rooms. And again, we said earlier that there's a lot of antiques still left over in here or unique items. And we find something that made us think that maybe that monkey word meant something. We found a monkey lamp in a room. I know. How random is that? Yeah. So I took a picture. It's up on Instagram. I don't know if that's why we heard monkey or not, but it's just weird because I don't know how this spiritual stuff works. Were they telling us that it was something cool that they'd seen before? So they were mentioning it to us or did they know we were going to see it later and they're telling us something that's going to happen later, like precognitive something? I don't know. It's just weird. And just so people are aware, because I don't think we described it this time, the Estes method is where we have the spirit box, which flips through the channels, but you actually have it plugged into earbuds that go Mm -hmm. into your ears. So first off, they're pretty secure and they don't let a lot of noise through. On top of those, you then wear your shooting earmuffs for gun use. Yes, for gun shooting. So, I mean, they're, they're, I don't hear anything. No. (laughs) Unless it's really, really loud. Like one time when we were at the, I think it was the Clay County Jail and everybody laughed about something that I'd said came over the box. I could hear that people were laughing because there were so many people laughing. Right. And it was really echoey in there. And I could occasionally hear sirens and stuff like that. I didn't hear all of them. I couldn't believe how much the sirens were going off in the background when I listened back to this stuff. I'm like, there's a lot of siren activity out there. It's actually pretty funny because so often I'll start talking to you and you can't hear me, (laughs) but I just (laughs) randomly because you're used to just speaking with somebody. And then when I'm doing the Estes using the dowsing rods, you'll try talking to me and (laughs) I don't know that you're talking to me. We'll go ahead and continue the session. Who are the three? Are there three separate spirits here? Take it easy. Okay. So was somebody playing with my hair a little bit ago? How's it going? (laughs) It's going pretty good. Thanks. How are you guys? Or how are you? In five. In five? What's in five? Are you going to do something in five? Ladies. What? Just like that. (laughs) Gentlemen, or gentleman, I hope. <laughs> I want to be polite. What was that? 350. 350. I don't know what 350 means. Did somebody just knock? I was really weird. There was some weird music. Did somebody just knock? Was that you? If so, can you please do it again? Mom? Again? Me? Do we have a child with us also? Up. Brace. Is there a child with us? Clearly there's... Me? Men. Me. And that was a woman? Okay. Is the female or lady, are you a child or are you an adult? Here. Seven. Are you a seven-year-old girl? Yeah. Okay. You want to take off or something? Give us just one minute. The girl, seven-year-old girl, and that started going off when I... Yeah. <laughs> we have a seven-year-old girl here? Well, thank you for answering. But we also apparently have some gentlemen here. 
and am I, and it was a guy. He was like, ladies. And somebody played with my hair a couple times. There is no way that you're gonna get that to come through on radio. Uh uh. Because it crossed over like three things, and it yeah. was just like that. It was like I said it just like he said. <laughs> I know. Was, I started laughing. Like, ladies. I was like, <laughs> and oh I my said, god. Gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I know it can get grinding to listen to that for so long. On this one, we hear mom twice. And uh, so this was the second time because we heard it earlier. And I'm wondering if the mom, me, was supposed to be mommy, perhaps. And it definitely seemed like we were talking to a seven-year-old girl because, as you guys heard Kelly mentioning, the K2 went off when she asked if this was a seven-year-old girl. Not only do you have me saying, yeah, but then the K2 went off as well. So it's like we had a double thing happening. Yeah, this was such a great session because sometimes when you're using the spirit box, there's a little bit of a delay to reactions Mm -hmm. and you are just, boom, answering me. (laughs) Yeah. And I will say this first session was better than the other two. So I think we were just really locked in with this one. And how about that, ladies? Kelly? (laughs) We are. It reminds me of uh, the Clay County Jail when that guy said, what's going on? Something like that. Yeah, because I try to say everything just like when I heard the yeah from the little girl. I said it just like she was and it was kind of like a yeah, like how a little girl would probably say that was her age. Mm -hmm. So I I always try to say everything like I hear it. And I know Amy Bruni, when we watch Kindred Spirits, it seems like she does the same thing. She'll kind of say things in whatever way it came through. Well, there's a lot to be said for the intonation just versus saying the actual word, but saying it the way that you hear it. Yeah, because if I just went, ladies, first of all, you won't know that it had to go over a period of time, which is not going to come through a spirit box that's flipping through channels like doop, 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 doop. It, it just does not have enough time. And also when I mentioned that I heard word music, you are going to hear music coming through a spirit box because it's going through radio channels. But usually you'll hear just a little, you know, like a little one note or something. A quick blip. So if I'm hearing like a piece of music that covers a over several things, that to me is something that's more paranormal in nature. Plus, I always run reverse on the AM band so you don't get as much music coming through there. All right. Here is some more of the session. You can't hear me anyway. <laughs> Thank you. And it was a little girl's voice. Aw. My pleasure. So did you used to live here? Or do you live here? here? You're still here. Yes, I'm sorry. That was not, that was kind of rude of me. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. So do you like it when people... Toddler. And is there a toddler also? Is that the three-year-old? Three. That was very clear. Okay. So if I'm correct, can you please light that up again? Do we have a seven-year-old girl and a three-year-old toddler? You lit that up previously with the seven-year-old girl. You're question. kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> or is the gentleman still here? With the deep voice? I want to know who was messing with my hair. Yeah, right. Whether it was one of the kids or a grown-up. Like I said, I don't mind it as long as you don't hurt me. (laughs) Does anyone still want to have a conversation? I just had her take the headphones off for a minute so I could speak with her. But she can hear you again through the box. She can't hear me though. That's why she has the headphones on. I know they look funny. children with us? Do we 
We still have the seven-year-old girl here. Could you ask something in Spanish? ¿Cómo estás? Mi nombre es Kelly. I saw the look. Breakdance. Breakdance. That I cannot do, and I speak very, very little Spanish, unfortunately. So, ¿qué es tu nombre? Nombre. A dónde? A dónde? I know that means where, I believe. I wish I still remembered how to speak Spanish. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you lit up when I said Spanish, Espanol. You hablo poquito, or poco Espanol. Mucho poco, yes. <laughs> See. Oh. <laughs> es hijo or, o hija? Hijo? Sí o no? So Kelly, I asked you to say something in Spanish because I felt like I was hearing voices talking in Spanish and we got a donde, which I looked up because I knew that donde was where, but I'm like, when there's an A in front of it, what was that again? Because I mean, I took it all through high school, but I don't remember a whole lot of it. Yeah, thanks for putting me on the spot there. <laughs> But I mean, you explained, you said your name, what's your name? I don't speak a lot of Spanish. And adonde means where to. So I'm wondering, you were asking for a name. I don't know if they were like, well, where am I supposed to say it? Or oh, it could be if they were just maybe, I don't know. Sometimes I think spirits are talking to each other, too. That's true. And I know you didn't get a lot more Spanish, but when I was doing the little interactions, <laughs> piecemealing a little bit of Spanish that I could remember, the K2 kept going off quite a bit. Oh, okay. That's cool. I did not know that. Let's go ahead and continue with the session. I can ask where the bathroom is, don't they? In your... In my... Could you repeat that again? Por favor. Three. Okay, three again, huh? Your body. <laughs> okay... Are we speaking with the male again? Is this the same gentleman that we were speaking with earlier? If you just... If I just... Stay. Okay. We could stay here. For a while at least. Eve? Eve? Is that somebody's name? If Eve is somebody's name, can you please get closer to that and light it up more? It goes all the way up to red like a rainbow. Careful. What should we be careful of? Or do you have to be careful? Okay, that was very clear. It sounded like a little kid. Oh. Are you saying careful because of getting near the light? It won't hurt you. It just lights up. Many, many people use it. Thank you. Ask. Thank you very much. I saw you bring that all the way up to orange. Did you touch it real fast? If you keep your hand there longer, it'll light up and flicker and go all the way up to red and see all the pretty colors. Careful. It's okay. I know you're worried about that. It's safe. It's not going to hurt you. It doesn't burn. It's not like fire. It's not a candle. 
I would think you've probably seen these before, though. Patience. <laughs> we also have a recorder right here. I can put this down. Out right. on the street. Out on the street? I'm going to put this down here if you'd like to say anything into that. We'll be able to listen back to it later. We won't hear you right now. The only way we'll hear you right now is if you say something through this. And she hears you through the headphones. Chuck? Chuck? Is that your name? Is that the gentleman that said Lou's? <laughs> that was Speak. That was pretty, pretty great being able to say that because that was a long, drawn out thing to say. And this goes through channels really fast. First. Normally we don't hear that much. Thank you. See, I saw you light it up even further. Good job. We appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate that a lot. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So. Yes. Yes. Chuck. Did you work here? Did you rape? Rape? Did you commit that here? What? I don't know. Maybe she misunderstood what you said. We don't mean any disrespect. I can just only go off of what she's saying through the box. She can't hear me. She can't hear my questions. She it continued. Only, she can only hear what's coming through this. That's how you speak to her. No. You don't want to speak to her? What about the kids? Are you guys still around? Constant. Constant. Are you constantly around me? <laughs> I have kids too. I love hanging out with kids. Chuck. Chuck. Well, Chuck, did you work here? Or did you perform here? You okay? You okay? Need a break? Ooh. Yeah, I just was asking you that, but you still couldn't hear me yet. <laughs> so we get the name Eve there for the first time. And then there's that careful and okay. We're wondering, listening back now, were the kids talking to each other or an adult talking to a child telling them, be careful, the kid says okay. And, you know, touching that K2, because then they did touch the right. K2. And you said it went to orange right away. Like it was kind of like they put a finger on it for a minute and then backed it away quick. Yeah, it seemed like they were getting more bold with using that K2. Initially, it was just little blips here and there, kind of in response to what I was asking. But then after you said careful and you heard the kids say, OK, they did light it up really high a couple of different times. Yeah. And again, we we wonder because we had that one investigation where it seemed to indicate to us that the K2 hurts. Right. We'll never really know. And I feel bad that I was like, yeah. oh, no, it doesn't hurt. You're fine. <laughs> yeah. So now sometimes we're like, we're not sure. But if you can touch it, you know, I don't know. Because if it's, if it's pulling energy from them, I don't know how it works in spirit yeah, world. So, either. But you clearly were getting quite a bit of activity with that K2. I had my eyes closed because it helps me to focus better. Right. So I didn't see any of that happening. And then out on the street, I wondered if that was coinciding with that really loud siren that was going by. Could be. I mean, the, the roll-up door was about halfway up. Any spirit could have just wandered in from the street, too. We don't know. <laughs> exactly. And here we have Chuck for the first time. Then we got it a second time. It's going to actually come up again later. So we definitely feel like there was some kind of a spirit that went by the name Chuck here. I needed a bit of a break. So we decided to get the dousing rods out again. And something, Kelly, that I think we figured out, especially we were listening back to the Exchange Hotel investigation because we're 
going to be on another show and we want to talk about that on there. So we wanted to re- revisit, yes. refresh our minds in terms of the entire experience. And that actually was the first investigation in which we used the new dowsing rods that have a better holder on them. It doesn't have the metallic ones. It's more of a wooden holder. Right. And, Handle. Yes. <laughs> and all through that, we were having a lot of difficulty getting any communication. And you kept wondering, I wonder if it's because the dowsing rods are new, blah, 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 blah. We've used them now repeatedly. And you still like to go back to those first ones that still stick. Right. I just it's like your energy is connected with those. Yeah, I feel much more connected to those particular ones, even though they are the longest ones that we have. So they're not as easy to travel with. But they're the ones that I have the most sensitivity with. Yeah. And they they work the best. Like the other ones, it takes them a while to finally get them to cross. Whereas the other ones, it's like, bam, bam, bam. Right. And it's For some reason with that set, I can feel much more sensitivity in terms of when different spirits are interacting. Mm -hmm. You can feel the the difference in the way that the rods move and how they feel in your hand. When you first get the dousing rods out here on the stairs, you kind of felt like you were having a little bit of trouble getting a communication going on because multiple spirits seem to be trying to use them all at once. Right. We asked if it was the toddler playing with Kelly's hair and here's the audio of that. Can you straighten? Can you straighten them out, please? There you go. Thank Great you. job. So, can you point to where the toddler is at, please, so we can see? If you don't mind, just point both of the rods in the same direction as to where the toddler is. Please. One of the rods is pointing over to, oh, it was pointing to Kelly's right, but now it's pointing behind her. Is the toddler on the stairs behind us? Better be careful. Don't fall. Don't fall down the stairs. (laughs) Yes. Can you point them straight ahead, please? Thank you. So... I just remembered something. I can't remember exactly how it was worded when you were doing the hostess. Was the toddler the one playing with my hair? Yes. <laughs> so the the rods pointed behind Kelly, and that's where she felt her hair being played that's with. That's okay. I don't mind. You can play with Kelly's hair. It's okay. <laughs> can you tell us what your name is? I don't know if the toddler can speak yet. Can say their name in three. All right. <laughs> Can you say your name? That's Kelly and I'm Diane. We have that recorder right here by her knee. Yep, if you say it, we'll hear it. We won't hear it right now, but we'll hear it later. But we'd like to tell your story. Did the little girl tell you her name at all? Um, no. When I kept turning around, now you didn't know I was turning around because you had your eyes closed and you had the Estes going previously. But I kept turning around and looking behind me, not because I felt like there was a large person behind me. I felt like it was just a little human, (laughs) just like right behind me, somebody small. So at the end of that audio there, it almost sounded like a name being said. Again, we have so much contamination here, but it sounded like it was closer to the recorder than a far away. We'll play it here again. We won't hear it right now, but we'll hear it later. But we'd like to tell your story. Did the little girl tell you her name at all? I'll go ahead and play it one more time. We won't hear it right now, but we'll hear it later. But we'd like to tell your story. Did the little girl tell you her name at all? Now I'm just going to isolate the area where we think the EVP is. I'll play it here. I'll play it one more time. Kelly, to me, it sounds like a little girl saying M. Yeah, it's definitely whispered, but I agree. Yeah, and it uh, to me, it sounds like a little girl's voice. It didn't sound like an older voice. Very difficult to hear, but it sounds like it's like right there. So I don't think it's like contamination. Right. We were all the way down the stairs. Any people that were in the building were upstairs and around the corner. Well, even I think in some of the other audio, you can hear people who clearly glanced down the stairs and were like, oh, sorry. <laughs> right. And you could hear that they're kind of off in the distance. 
I'll play it one more time. Then we thought we would do something maybe to try to help trigger the kids to start talking to us on EVPs. We know that when we were at Greenwood Cemetery doing an investigation in Orlando, we had sung Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star when we were at the nursery area and the flashlight turned itself on. So we thought, well, let's go ahead and sing that with the kids. Yeah, that got really active with the flashlight. I think it made them really happy. Okay, we're going to sing it. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Did, oh, <laughs> was that <laughs> fun? You. Did you Did sing you it like with that? us? And as you heard, we got a little happy at the end because they lit the K2 up really well to let us know that they liked it, I think. Yeah. So listening back to the audio, I didn't hear any little voices joining in with us. But clearly, yeah, they were responding with the K2 because it, bam, lit up right after we finished. Then we did our second Estes session while we were still sitting there on the stairs. I wish I could hold your hand like a mom would. Eden? Eden? I know that somebody said Eve, maybe it was Eden before. Dosinko? Dosinko. 26? Or no, 25. 25? It would be Bacon Cinco that was 25, so 25. Do we have more children with us? I'm sorry, I really don't know Spanish very well. Lo siento. Neighbor lady? Neighbor lady. Neighbor lady means. Is that Woods. The, the neighbor lady, somebody speaking Spanish? Come touching me again? Did you boot me in the news? Here it is. What are you trying to give us? Here, what is? a little bit less busy now. Do you like it when it's quieter? It makes it better for us to hear you when you speak into the recorder, that's for sure. First. First what? I love people. <laughs> you love people. <laughs> So you like it when it's busy. That's a long sentence through there. So you love it when there's a lot of people around here? You like the energy? We got the name Eden here. And then, of course, Kelly, you got touched again. I did. Um, it was kind of funny because it was like it felt very gentle, but almost like a little kid. If they come up to you and like touch the end of your nose with their fingertip. It was okay. the strangest sensation. I've never had anything like that happen before. <laughs> I felt the electrical energy uh -huh. before when I've been touched. But that time it was just like an outright touch. <laughs> wow. And then I said, there it is. So it's almost like it was like touching your nose. There it is. <laughs> Trying to get my attention. Then we got apple. <laughs> I like apples. Especially when they're really crispy and juicy. Apple. <laughs> and that'll correlate even more a little bit later. Yeah, we did this crazy thing that they called human pendulum. I'd never heard of this before. Have you, Kelly? Not at all. Basically what it is, we did this at the end of the evening. They put one person in the center who was supposed to be like the pendulum 
And then there were four people around them that stood shoulder to shoulder, kind of putting them in a box so that that person couldn't fall down or anything like that. Another person walks around the outside asking questions and the human pendulum is supposed to show, indicate, okay, I'm going to move in this direction. This means yes. I'll move in this direction. It means no. So there was a girl who was in the middle. She indicated that her yeses were going to be when she leaned forward and her noes were going to be when she leans backward. So while they were doing this, he started going, the guy who was walking around the outside talking was going to start going through the alphabet to see if we could get a name. And it indicated that it was an A name. Oh yeah, Adam. Does your name start with an A? Yes. Yeah, Adam, early. Yes. Is your name Adam? But I thought it was a woman. Or did I miss that part? You missed it. I'm sorry. You're I'm okay. So <laughs> What's funny is we've gotten Eve three times tonight. You bought what? Eve three times. So Adam and, and Eve. Eve. Oh, Isn't that yeah. weird? Okay. <laughs> I'm taking that one. Adam, are you looking for Eve? That's it, yes. Would you like an apple? We also got we apple. apple. We got apple too <laughs> earlier on the spirit box. Well, that's kind of weird because we've gotten Eve, Eden, and Apple during the night, and then they got Adam during the human pendulum. <laughs> exactly. So we're like, are we going through Genesis here or what? Are we going to have a flood pretty soon? <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what all of that meant, but it was if this is like precognitive type stuff, it was kind of fun how we were getting that through the Estes method. And then all of a sudden they get the name Adam during the human pendulum. Definitely. And I'll just say my own personal belief. I already don't trust pendulums. I've never used them for investigating. I think they're way too easy to manipulate. A lot of people say dousing rods you can manipulate. Well, if you think you can manipulate dousing rods, you can manipulate a pendulum easily. Human pendulum, way too easy to manipulate. And I don't know if that person is leaning in certain ways because they just lean that way. I mean, they're not blindfolded or have their ears plugged or anything like that. Exactly. That's the thing. That's why I like doing the Estes even with the dowsing rods and have you ask questions and have the rods react because I can't even hear what you're asking. Exactly. So then there's no indication that you're controlling it in any way. We're going to continue with this Estes method here. You can speak. Double. Double. You can speak through the box and she can hear you through the headphones. Thank you. I see you turning the light on. 3D. 3D. I don't know what to make of that. Beef. <laughs> well, we did just eat hamburgers tonight. Yeah. More. We had an early dinner. We drove about two hours to come here to visit with you guys. Came in our car from further up in Florida. Stop. What do you want us to stop? Stop asking questions? Jacob? Yeah. Jacob, is that one of the children here? If it is, can you please turn on that light again? He just did. (laughs) Yes, I know. Can you please do it again? Jacob, are you a child? Or are you an adult? Or a young man? We don't mean any disrespect. We just are wanting to know everybody's story. Just like you're probably curious about us. So who said that they like people? They like it when there's a lot of people here. Can you share their name? Or your name? Please? been getting several names, but we're trying to figure out who is who. I can't do that. Sure you can. 
Many people have been saying their name into them. Because people. Oh. You don't like to do that around people? Okay. I don't want you to be nervous. That's all right. Is it all right that we're sitting here in Jack? With you? Jack? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm glad that you're okay with that. I know there's a lot of people up there. Back up. Back up. You want us to go back up the stairs and leave? Cut you down. Cut you down. sure what you mean. That. Can you tell me more, please? Tampa. Tampa. No, we're further north than that. We come from a place up by Orlando. It's called Claremont. Where we live, there's lots and lots of lakes around us. Our home. Did you live here for a long time? Make it. Make what? Thank you. You're welcome. I wish I knew what you were thanking me for, though. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I hope that you're talking into the recorder also. Although you're sharing a lot, you, all, all of you are sharing a lot of names through the spirit. That's good. So we appreciate that. Then we'll re-listen to this later when it's a little bit quieter. What? The recorder. This thing right here, you can say your name into it if you'd like. If okay. You <laughs> Perfect. We appreciate it. Make some room for you. Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, bud. Sounds like we have a lot of different friends around here hanging out with us hey dude <laughs> hey dude <laughs> what's up can you tell us how many people are here now kids and adults me me yeah <laughs> me can you give us a number please Anna. Anna? Is there an Anna here? We're getting a whole lot of names. We really appreciate you taking the time to sit Chuck. <laughs> and speak with us. <laughs> Sounds like Chuck's back. No, I wish you guys could tell me a number of how many are here with us, though. So. Kevin? There are a lot of names coming through right now. <laughs> are you guys all for real? Or are you just saying names now? I feel like somebody might be pranking us a little bit. You okay? You okay? Yeah, lots of names during the latter part of that session. And of course, we got Chuck coming through again. <laughs> Ladies. <laughs> and there was a lot of me, me. So I'm wondering if spirits were stepping forward and saying, you know, I'm here, me. Not really. Right. You got to say your name so we identify you. I think in the future, I'm going to try to, if I have time in between responses and stuff, saying, you know, this was a different voice. Because you can tell when there are different voices coming through. Sure. And I definitely sometimes if I hear like the same voice three times, especially right in a row, I'll say... That's all been in the same voice. Right. Because that, again, is something that you wouldn't get coming through just a regular radio. We did do a third Estes session in the padded room that we had been in earlier. Because we thought, <laughs> well, since we were be... locked up. Yeah. <laughs> since we'd gotten some 
activity in there a little bit. We thought, well, let's go in there and try that. But there just what really wasn't a whole lot coming from that. And I will admit, as the night was going on, I was getting more tired. And once I'm tired, my brain starts to float and I start thinking about other things. And then it's like, wait a minute, you need to concentrate on what you're doing here, Diane. Right. And it's not easy to listen to the spirit box, that constant, with that white noise just going and going. It, it can get, like for myself, I have a really hard time with it. It's very disconcerting to me personally. And there's actually some people who go to sleep to the sound of white noise. I know. I never could, I don't think. Yeah. But also, it could be kind of hypnotic. So I think about that third session, I, my brain was like, I'm fried. So I wasn't getting a whole lot of stuff. Right. So then we decided to join the group in the main room where the stage was at. That's, of course, when we did the human pendulum. And we had somebody else who was there investigating that told this story. Last time we were here, I was sitting over the ch these chairs. It was set up a little different, but the chairs were like lined up here and I was like in the middle. Um, and there was a name, James, that kept coming up. Um, that should be related to the location. And out of nowhere, I'm like, so are you happy with what's going on here and that it's new owners and they're renovating? Plain as day, I'm a recorder. Yes. I asked again. Two times in a row, he answered yes, both times, cool. within a seven-minute period. So there you heard that the name James had come up, and James Crosby was the man who had owned the Bazaar Bazaar before this was taken over by somebody else and the rehabilitation's been going on. So I don't know if that name James is supposed to reflect to him. As far as I know, he's still living, but I don't know for sure. Right. Maybe they just miss him or they like what he did with the building, but I now mean, they're changing it again. <laughs> yeah, he'd been there for like 12 years with all of his stuff. So now all of his stuff isn't there and he's not there. So that might be why they're like, hey, where'd James go to? Could be. It was great to get out and investigate again and see some more of Florida that we hadn't seen before. Our evidence seems to indicate that there was a number of spirits running through this place. There isn't much history to suggest as to why. Is the Heard Opera House haunted? That is for you to decide. Well, it's a place I'd like to check out again in the future, especially using some of the information that we have here now. Definitely. We'd love to have you guys check out our website at historyghostbump.com. And if you want to send us some feedback, you can do that at historyghostbump at gmail.com or at any of our various social media sites. Kelly, we dropped Haunted Nantucket as our last episode, and we heard from Ashley and the crew. I'm listening to the latest episode, Haunted Nantucket, and has anyone been like... How am I related to this ghost? My grandmother's father's family came strongly from Nantucket, and I'm related to the Coffin and Starbuck family as a descendant. I'm not saying that I'm a descendant of a ghost, but I may be a descendant of a ghost. <laughs> How cool is that? I know. I was like, that's amazing. I want to thank you guys for joining us on this episode. I've been your host, Diane. And this has been Kelly. You take care now. Bye-bye. This episode is brought to you by our executive producers. Fan of the show? Subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast catcher. The Heard Opera House is located in Arcadia, Florida. 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 <laughs> it just flows right off the tongue, doesn't uh -huh. it? The area where Arcadia would be started was indis industrialized. It's industrialized. <laughs> Making up our own words already. <laughs> so Arcadia was becoming a railway. A railway. A railway. A way, 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 I have huh? a really hard time saying that together. We passed the old railroad dupe. Depot? Depot. Boy, We're going I'm having to the a depot. hell of a time today again. Simmons was a merchant and served two terms on the Arcadia City Council. <laughs> Herdwood also found the Arcadia Electric Lighthouse. Lighthouse? They had a lighthouse in Arcadia? Yeah, right there on the main <laughs> street. It's amazing. 
James Crosby, who owned the Bazaar Bazaar, told a paper. Paper. Piper. Paper. Piper. 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 Yeah, when you do the, the Estes, that 